So Hello. I'm going to record this so that everybody will have their lesson mm -hmm. afterwards. Perfect. And hello, Thank everybody, you. and welcome. And Angela's going to say a few words. Yes, welcome, everyone. Now, um, I'm Dr. Angela Chan. I'm the organizer of this event. And uh, on behalf of Euro Elites, Grand Maestro, Grand Metropolitan Trinity, we, we would like to welcome Professor Alan Fraser. Um, he has been the adjudicator, Grand Master, and Grand Jury member for all our competitions. And uh, actually, he has listened to your performances. And uh, today, we would like to introduce you all to Professor Alan Fraser uh, to have this master class. And uh, we would ask you to, just to make sure that if it is not your turn to play, um, just please turn off your microphones. And when it's your turn to play, uh, we will announce and then um, you can turn on your microphone. If you have any questions, well, after you're playing, you can engage with Professor Ellen Fraser to ask any questions about your musical performance or any other details. So let's first welcome Professor Ellen Fraser who will introduce us today to his piano somatics. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. And thank you for organizing this. I'm very, very grateful. It's wonderful to be able to have people from all over the world here together. Uh, so uh, piano somatics, just we're going to spend most of the day listening to you play and working on, on your playing. But just um, uh, piano somatics is the, it's, uh, the art of feeling what you're doing as you're doing it at the piano and using that feeling to improve uh, uh, how you play. So of course, if you, if you slow, everybody knows about slow practice, but some people do slow practice like this. Oh, I have to learn this note. Uh, bo, bo, bo. And they play slowly without any musical uh, understanding. But if you play slow, bringing all the musical elements in, then it sounds better to the ear. It's more interesting for the mind. But also the feeling, the actual sensations of the hand learn more than if you just kind of bang the notes in. The sen sensitivity in your sensation actually helps you to learn more. And in piano somatics, we take a funny kind of a metaphor. We look at the hand, and this comes from Feldenkrais method, which is a, a method for improving any sort of movements through this in increased sensation and increased precision of perception. Uh, and it, it appeared to me at a certain point that the hand is like a mini body with a an ankle and a knee and a hip joint and a pelvis and a torso. And when we, when we play the piano, if we have this kind of a falling touch, like a dropping touch, then that would be like walking down the street. Uh, oh, I'm going to walk down the street like this. I'm going to feel how heavy I am at every step. Yeah, well, nobody walks like that. But because we were taught to feel the weight of our arms in, the, in playing the piano, sometimes we play like that. And of course, eventually you figure out that you, know, you can't play like that. You have to make more of a phrase. But sometimes a trace of that overly weighted touch. Now, of course, we do have weight. But if you use it a little too much, it can get in the way. So using the sensation can help us perceive exactly where we're, we're tripping up just a little bit when we want to run, or whether our sound could be a little bit different if we fell down a little less or came in a little more or moved a little more this way or a little more that way. It's a very precise science and there's, uh, there are lots of very uh, uh, complicated uh, interventions which you can make. So as I listen to you play today, we're going to be thinking about how we play in those terms. Is that clear to everybody? Yeah, good. So um, I, I, of course, I've forgotten. What, what is the order? I, uh, I yes. think it's or um, I will thing. announce. Pardon me? Yes. Uh, uh, we start with Aurora and yeah. me first. Mm -hmm. And then Isla and then Eric, correct? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, can I start? You can start. Do you have any questions before you start? 
uh, I have questions. Uh, can I ask after I perform? You can ask. Uh, I can hear you now, so you can ask your questions or sit down and show me if you want to show me something. Okay, just, just give me a second. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have a lot of questions. Um, it's that I learned these classical pieces in my own and I don't know the proper technique uh, and uh, for, for complicated pieces like uh, this one like fantasy impromptu right now uh, I will be performing fantasy impromptu and uh, so which is the most useful techniques that is uh, used in most pieces yeah uh, look for that we're going to have to uh, see how you play because some people, they play very heavy and they, they need to float the arm more. Other people are just too relaxed and they need to, to play stronger. So actually one person can have a totally different uh, technical advice from me, in, from another person. That's the trouble. That's the trouble with trying to answer a question. It's a very good question, but it's hard to answer in your particular case be, be, before we see how you play. You understand? Okay. So can I play first? And I because other questions are like this only. So can I play first? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, bravo, Aurora, bravo. And you said in your, I read your questions that you wrote uh, beforehand, and you said that you learned by ear this piece from YouTube tutorials and not by reading the music. That's, that's an amazing accomplishment. That's a very, that's a wonderful accomplishment. Uh, and uh, it's bravo, bravo. It's very, fa it's fantastic. And, um, and the, your your questions your question about the pedal is very important as well, and uh, and there's something about the hand. Uh, it's not about fingering per se, but there's something about the way the hand is constructed. I remember, and this is everybody else who's listening. This is going to be useful for you as well. Uh, so. Uh, because in this piece, there's a, a specific problem with the difference between the fingers and the thumb. So many people, they go like this and they try to make the thumb like the fingers. But actually the thumb, you'll notice the thumb works by, by folding over. Like it actually goes opposite to the fingers, right? So it's like, and the thumb's hip joint is right at the wrist. The thumb's hip joint is not here the thumb zip joint is way over here it's in a completely different place it's as if there was a, a funny kind of a person who uh who had one hip joint up here and the other hip joint down there so they kind of have to walk like this all the time so of course if you're playing the piano you you can't walk like that all the time but you sort of you can make adjustments so that the thumb is going to work better and basically, the, the in the the first place and the most well, the, all of all of this piece, basically most of it is is in the left hand. So, so it's a combination of things. Your pedal, your pedaling is you're pedaling a little too much. Now your 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 right hand is running beautifully, but because the pedal is so rich, it's kind of like you're running through mud. So your fingers are working great. They, they work really great, but I don't hear it so much because, because of the thick pedal. But you, you want to have a little bit of pedal. The pedal is marked, but just because uh, if there's a pedal marking doesn't, doesn't mean you always tromp the pedal down to the bottom. This is going to take a lot of work for you to, to figure out that when, as soon as you press the pedal a little, little bit, the, the dampers come off the strings but they're half touching the strings, but half not. So, so you see, they're almost, uh, you see they're, they're, but this is full pedal. Now this is half pedal. It's already clearer. Now this is quarter pedal. You see, the pe the, you lift the pedal until the dampers are touching the strings, but not entirely clamping the strings. Then you get thinner pedals. For Chopin, 
especially this piece, it's very, very important. But why, one reason you were doing the, uh, that pedal so thick was to cover up something that's not working well in the right, in the left hand. So what? Watch. If I play like this, oh, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you on the overhead camera because you're gonna see it better if you can see it on the overhead camera. Just hold on a second. Yeah. So look, my thumb is stretched out. You see how my thumb is stretched out? So that's, that's, that's a good way of playing. It sounds pretty good. But when the thumb is stretched out like that, there's tension in the hand. And that actually makes the playing not as good as it could be. So if I, if, you know, I'm going to do something funny. Did you see me move my arm? And did you hear it sounded better? It sounds better. It's more bubbly. Because look. Now, now I'm going to go back to the other camera so you can see. So what, what happens is that when the thumb is stretched, watch my hand. You see my fingers, they're just going to drop down. It's like a lever. It's, a, it's a, just like a pencil. Boop, 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 boop. But when my thumb is stretched out like that, that lever has got all sorts of muscles. So when I, when I go over here... Oh, now look, my thumb can just drop down the same way the fingers drop down. So I get a better sound. You understand? So if I go, it'll be a little too loud. You see, when I go over here, so could you try doing that? Could you uh, play and, but the, just the left hand and move your arm way more than you think. Move your arm way more over to the inside. So move your left arm to the right as you go. And just try that out for a little bit and let's see, okay? Okay, good. Does it feel different? Yeah. Is the sound different? Yeah. Okay, now do a further thing. Go over here and now don't fall down on that one. Go down and stand up on it. Look, stand up. When the thumb stands up, when the finger stands up, the, the top of the finger goes up. It's like my hip joints going up, okay? That's the finger's hip joint. But when the thumb stands up, the thumb says, go away hand, go away hand. And the thumb pushes the hand's hip joint up. So go like this and stand, 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 stand. At, at the fast speed, you can't really see it. But you see, I'm not falling down. But the stand is not so visible like that. It begins more internal. Just like when I'm running the 100 yard dash, you don't see me standing up again at every step I take. But there's a standing action in there. So could you please try that now? Move the arm to the inside and stand on the thumb. Move the arm to the inside and the thumb says, go away hand. That's very good. Many people do that. The what, what you did, and then you pushed your wrist up. But look, I said the thumb stands up and it says go away hand. The hand goes up. Look, watch carefully. When the wrist goes up, the hand went down. It's the opposite. <laughs> this is complicated. So push the hand up, leave the wrist in the middle. Okay, so, oh, oh, and do not bend your thumb. Look. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to stand up out of my chair but I'm going to not I'm not going to straighten my knees. How far can I stand up without I can't stand up but my knees are bent. So when you do this straighten the thumb, straighten the thumb. Just go very slowly. Go go very slowly and straighten the thumb. Yeah. Just go here. Go here and stop here. And show me how you're going to stand up on this. Stand up. Okay, that's 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 the wrist and every all this arm is standing up. The stand up happens in the thumb itself. Look, just here. Look, my arm stays my arm stays neutral. 
But my thumb goes, my thumb goes like this. Literally, it goes like that. Boom. So, like that. Very simple, actually. Can I just play it again? Yeah, watch, watch carefully. I'll do it up here so you can see better. Here we go. Now watch, my arm stays normal. Oh look, my thumb went uh, like that. And it's, you see, your, your, thumb, your thumb wants to be alive. When you run, your legs want to be alive. And somehow your thumb didn't wake up enough. So your arm's going, come on thumb, wake up. And your wrist is going, come on thumb, wake up. But it would be better if the thumb woke up. <laughs> Just by doing this simple movement. Try that a couple of times. Just go to your piano and do this boom. Everybody can try that. Boom. That's better. Here. Aurora. Aurora, put your thumb here. Aurora, put your thumb here. Put your thumb here. No, here. Up on top of the piano. And then just go like this. That's it. And now attach your thumb to the piano and do that. There, you did it. That's it. That's, your thumb feels different? Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's these big muscles in the thumb. You just made them work for the first time. They need to work. So now go to the inside and try it like that. That's right. Now make sure you do not fall on the note E. So, so if I go very fast, it's almost so light it doesn't sound. Like that. Try. Okay, and now do that faster. Feel it's, ba it's way better, isn't it? Yeah. Did it, it feel so even? You see, now your left hand is dancing, but it's not struggling to dance. It's just dancing. That's because you made this little adjustment. You, if you look at the thumb, it's, the thumb is kind of like an arm thumb. The thumb and the arm are together, and the fingers are out to the side. So now you gave. Just give your arm to your thumb a little bit more and it starts to run much, much better. Now, let's do an experiment. You play the, play the, the first theme, that stuff, hands together, but with no pedal, and doing this funny thing with your left hand. Okay? Okay. How how was that for you? It was a bit um I would say sharp and crispy kind of thing. Yeah, it was the best you played. It was sharp and crispy, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, very, very good. And did you see it the right hand it takes a little bit of getting used to. Because the when the left hand is doing that, the that makes the right hand feel different. So you have to practice them together a little bit more. So let's do a little experiment. Would you do four notes? And on the fourth note, do this, this same funny exercise with your thumb. And stop. Like that. Now uh, you see? Watch. You did it with your elbow. Look, look at my hand very carefully. My hand does nothing. My elbow did a lot. That's my elbow. No, not the elbow. The fingertips to the ceiling. The fingertips to the ceiling. Everybody else who's watching can try this too. Fingertips to the ceiling. Yeah, can you try that? That's better. Again, stretch the... F and point the fingers to the sky. Yeah, like that. Bravo, again. Do that five times. Da 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 da. Feel those fingers going up. Da da da. Again, five times. Yeah. 
Ja. Okay. Does that make your thumb feel different? It's more alive, is it not? Yeah. And when you do that, you, real, you realize, oh my gosh, I was falling down on my thumb a little and I didn't know it. Is that right? Yeah. So when you tried to put the hands together a little bit a while ago and it didn't work, at the point where it stopped working, that's where your thumb fell down. Now, one reason your fell, thumb fell down is because you bent it. Now, now look, if I want to make a very sharp sound, yeah, like that, I actually, sometimes I will bend the thumb, but more often I will actually straighten it. So now, play me the right hand uh, under the... And every time you have that thumb note, the thumb again says, go away hand. The thumb does not fall down. The thumb, make sure you stand up on your thumb. So maybe stop here. And then again. So two times you do stop and you do this funny movement. Try. Good. It makes your thumb feel different, right? And when the thumb says go away hand, like then the intervals will be different. Go, oh my, my hand is in a different place. So you will have to readjust. But my advice to you is to learn to play with an active thumb. Because when you don't when you don't activate the thumb, then there are these little fall downs hidden inside. Now, you put the pedal down and you hit it very well. With such, such rich pedal, I couldn't really hear that you're falling down on your thumb. But I know <laughs> because I play piano for a long time. So I knew if you make less pedal, I'm going to start hearing this, this flaw. But now we have a way of, of solving the flaw and you will feel better. You will feel better and you will play better. Okay. So this is very, very important. So basically learn this new movement. Of, so the, the idea about piano somatics, uh, by the way, I, I, uh, I wrote, a, uh, I wrote a, a whole series of books called Pianimals where there's a, a bunch of exercises. I, I can send you the link for this afterward. Anyway, there's a bunch of exercises. And the idea is that some of the exercises, like this thing, who would do this when they're playing the piano? Nobody that says, go away hand like that when you're playing the piano, right? But the idea is that the thumb uh, learns to move better. The thumb learns to stand up better. And then when you play the piano, your thumb works better. So that's the idea here. That's why I had you do this strange exercise. Of course, you can't do that while you're playing the Chopin, but you can, your thumb can work better and work different because you did this exercise. You understand? Okay. Yeah. So, so now, uh, pardon me? Yeah, I actually uh, said that, uh, for example, in any piece, in any Chopin's piece, if uh, there is a part of the thumb or a fingering, I uh, the, uh, I would say, Okay, it's just a thumb. A note has to be pressed by thumb. Then we always have to do like this. That's right. Okay. Uh, this this applies pretty much everywhere. Not everywhere, but as a general rule, if you try it a few times, your thumb will work better. And many times, uh, a natural fingering will uh, appear. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, uh, your, your question about fingering uh, is a very, very wise one. But some, if my thumb is not working better, then I can find some fingering where it avoids the thumb or something. But then that's not going to be the best fingering. The best fingering would, would be to use the thumb well and then find a fingering that uses your thumb well. Okay. So, so this re, relearning how you use your thumb will lead to new and better fingering solutions. You understand? Okay. Yeah. 
So just a few more minutes. Let's go to the, the second theme, please. Yeah. Da -dee -da 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 -da. And here, of course, it's going to be the same thing in the left hand. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So can you play that a little bit for me, please? Second. Second thing. Yeah. Should I use the pedal as well? Yes, use the pedal. Just one more thing. Many times you do a movement like this. Well, that, that's a very, very good movement because it relaxes you. But if you do it on every note, that, that would be like I spoke like this. Yeah? But I speak like this. Now watch my... Did you see my arm did something different? My arm followed, my arm followed the line of the phrase. When I am talking, I don't tell you every word. I, I link my words together. The job of the arm is to link the notes together. So this movement is fine, it's very good, but if you do it too many times, you're not linking your notes. So the, the work I would ask you to do, take your left hand, put it on your right forearm like this, and play the, the melody alone. But try, try to carry, carry the arm. Try to carry the arm through along with the melody. It's like a soprano singing da -di -da -di -da -di -da. As if you could carry that voice. La 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 la. Da da di da. Try. Da. Oh, by the way, the melody is not. That's that's not written, is it? Th those notes are smooth. Not. Not long, short, long, short, long, but la, la. So that, because you learned it off YouTube video, perhaps you didn't catch that. But, but now try. So smooth them out, but use one. Look. Now watch. One, two, three, four, five notes. Only one arm movement. Try. Even smoother, even even smoother. Oh, by the way, for here, forget this thumb exercise. Don't do it anymore. We'll do that another time. Here we're doing an arm exercise. So here, feel the arm gliding all the way to the end of the phrase. And then, Glide all the way to the end of the phrase. Did it feel differently to you? Yeah. Does your piano sing more or less? No. It sings more. Look, this moving the arm like this, this is the art of making your piano sing. So you understand, many great pianists have said that the piano is a hammer instrument. It's a percussion instrument. The hammers are hitting the string. And the great art in piano playing is to make it sing. Because it doesn't sing naturally. It goes bong, bong, bong naturally. 
when you this is how you make it sing with the arm so uh, we have to stop now we have to listen to the other p participants but I, I thought you did very very well so if you work on these two ideas get that uh, m move the arm more to the thumb make the thumb stand up more don't fall down on it use the arm to join the notes then you're going to have many many new ways of playing which are going to do well for you yeah and um, one more question that uh, remember they said like this do we have to uh use that with uh with the left hand as well and you play the left hand as well if you have to uh use that technique when we glide do you have to glide with the left hand as well or left, left hand, hand. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, but look, in the left hand, you were already doing it. I never said a word about it. Oh, okay. Because, look, as soon as you do the more, arm more to the thumb, that's automatically gliding the, the arm, is it not? Yeah, it is. That's right. So, you see, sometimes I saw, oh, she's already doing it. I don't have to tell her. <laughs> So I, I, I knew that you could get these things quickly because I saw sometimes you're already doing it. All you have to do is if you know what you do, you can do what you want, right? So now you understand a little better what it is you're doing and how you could do it consistently, okay? Okay. Very good, Aurora. Very good. And thank you very much for you playing. You can call me Ami. Actually, Aurora is my surname. Pardon me? Aurora is my surname. You can call me Ami. Ami. Okay. Ami. Thank yeah. you, Ami. Thank you. You did very, very well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Are there any, any questions about what we heard and saw before we go on to Isla? It's okay. All very clear to me. <laughs> oh, lovely. great. Yeah, it's so, so when you're teaching online, like we're so far apart, we have to be extra specially careful to try to be as clear as possible in the explanation. So, yeah, you have to work hard. <laughs> and the, and the overhead camera I think helps a lot too, yeah? Yes, it's yeah. very helpful. We can see very well there. It's yeah. wonderful. I know you do it with your phone sometimes, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do the phone. I, I have a camera up there. I think I'm too clumsy with my th phone. I don't know, <laughs> like how. It's very convenient, so that yeah. you don't have to hold the phone. Uh, you're very good at it. You've got you've got the eagle eye. You just know exactly how to position the phone and find the hand. <laughs> yeah. Isla. I, I, I have to tell you before we start that I was, yeah, I was very impressed with your Prokofiev concerto. That's really quite something. Very good playing. Yeah. So, but today we're not going to do Prokofiev. We're going to do the Chopin Waltz in E flat major. Yes. Could you play that for me? Do you have any questions before you play it or would you like to just play it? Uh, yeah, you'll have, you'll have to speak up a little bit. Um, for the forte sections, how do I play loud but still like lighter than being really heavy? Because when I play the forte sections, I kind of play it heavy, and I don't think Chopin's supposed to be that heavy. And I was this, wondering how to like make it light but loud. This is a fantastic question, and we're going we're gonna to find a really great answer for you. That's an excellent question. And the answer that we're going to find, I think, will get right to the heart of the matter. But you, you, you show me first, and then we, I always have to see what you're doing first before we figure out how best to explain the answer, okay? So... Shall, shall we play for us now? Thank you. 
wonderful playing. Wonderful. Bravo, 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 bravo. Everybody's clapping. Excellent. Okay, so listen, uh, most of this... Um, most of this, I don't, I don't really have to uh, uh, give you advice. I mean, the whole first section and all, uh, and everything is. There's something I might be able to help you with in the first theme, but we'll get to that afterwards because it, it's going to fold into your your main question, which is how to play loud. Okay. So, um, when you play the piano. Do the keys go down? Yes or no? Yeah. So I like to say weird things. And I like to say that the biggest illusion in piano playing is that the keys go down. Now that's pretty weird, right? What? Of course it goes down. You're crazy. Okay. But, you want to play forte, and you go like this, and you press the keys down, and then it doesn't sound so good. Now, and when you, when you actually play like that, the keys may be going down, but you're running so fast that you hardly notice. And so... The, the fact, the so-called fact that they're going down is not the important thing. The important thing is that you're... you're the important thing is that you're running. Just like if you're running in real life with your real legs, you don't press the grounds down at every step. You just run. You spring up. Ding, 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 ding. And you go. And that's that's why your, your uh, passage work is so wonderful because you're doing that very, very well. But... So what, when, if I get out of the chair, if I'm going to stand up, I'm not pressing the ground down, and actually the press of the ground doesn't go down. I just straighten my legs, and up I go. So let's say you had... Well, where's the first forte in this piece? Let's go back. Um, it's in about the third section there. Uh, oh, yes, we have measure numbers, so we can actually tell you. Yeah, it's it's right here at measure measure fifty nine. Yeah, no, no, eighty. I can't see my numbers. Okay, so measure ninety five is actually yeah. That's the first. That's the first loud chord, right? Loud chord, right? Yeah. So, would you do a a funny? Okay, I'm going to give you an exercise, first of all. Do you know what Tai Chi Chuan is? Tai Chi, have you ever heard of that? It's a... You see old folks in the park doing it. They're going like this, and they're, they're, they're moving very slowly like that. Have you ever seen that? No? Okay, anyway, in Tai Chi... Tai, I'll, I have to explain some stuff to you, but it, we're, don't worry. It's all going to work out. So in Tai Chi, we don't just walk normally. We, we, you take a step and you don't transfer the weight. So, and then you transfer the weight afterwards. Now take a step, don't transfer the weight. And then transfer the weight. So they make the two parts of walking different. Take a step, move your body. Take a step, move your body. And, and to make sure that you're doing that well, you, you t put your foot out and then you just kind of like touch. It's called an empty step. Now, you can do the empty step at the piano. So would you please, Isla, would you please, uh, would you stand on your, on your finger on an E, E natural, or an F flat actually in this piece, and then just touch. I'll, I'll, sh I'll do this with my other hand so you can see it better, and I'll do it here. Now I'm just going to touch, 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 and I'm actually going to wiggle the key. Could you, so you just stand here sta and really feel you're standing well. Oh, I'm really standing up on my finger. And you're just wiggling. So that this finger has all the energy. It's like a yang finger. And this is very empty. It's like a yin finger. It's very empty. Can you do that for me? I just need to see how you do that. I'm sorry. Did you play so well. I'm making you do something that's like a, it's like a beginner. Why is he treating her like a beginner? But I have to explain something, which is going to help you to play louder, better. Okay? 
I'm sorry, really. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But try, just show me that for a second, please. That's right. And now, do that again, but stand up. Stand up more. When you stand up on this finger, the standing finger, make this, the, the, remember this is the hip joint? Make the hip joint go higher, okay? Try that again. Oh, that's your wrist. I, I, Isla, I didn't say make the wrist go higher. I said make the, the hip joint. There's a little knobby on top here. You see the little knobby? You make that knobby go higher. Show me. That's, do you feel your hand feels different when you stand like that? Look, the, uh, Isla, this little knobby here going up, that's what's going to make you play loud really well. So you better learn it. So, so stand up on this note and make this, this bone here, this little hill, the little knobby, go as high as you can. How high, could, how bumpy could you make that bump? Show me. Do it in slow motion and, and just show me. Okay, now uh, now do it with the third finger. Make the third finger bump the highest and just touch with the second. That's very good. Now, Isla, do you feel when you're standing on your third like that and then touching with the second, does the third want to fall down or does it, does it stay good? Does it sort of want to go down, or does it stay good while the other one's touching? How did it feel to you? Um, I don't think it really felt like, I, I didn't think it was going to like fall down, so I think it was going to stay good. Uh-huh. Try it again, and, and see if you can like stand up so well, that when you're touching like this, this one, this one stands just as well as if you were not touching. If you're just standing, it's going to stand really well. And now touch, touch, touch. And this, make this stand just as well. Don't let it get influenced by the, the moving finger. Very important. Can you try that? Great. Great. And now one more thing. When you're playing that note, don't push the key down. Look, if now just, just stand up. So pretend that the key's not even there and you're just gonna stand up. Because I saw you, I saw you push the key down. I saw you do that. So don't push the key down. The key goes down by accident. You just stand up. Do you see the difference? Yeah, yeah, you, but just stand up, don't push the key down, just, oh, the key went down by accident, and then touch, 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 touch. Aha! Uh -huh. You see, just, I'm sorry to treat you like a beginner, I really am, <laughs> but do you see, play, when you don't, push the key down at all. When you just stand up, like when I just stand up out of the chair, the, nothing goes down, nothing goes down. So that note going down, that's by accident. When you really do that, it's a different feeling in a hand, is it not? Yeah, something's going on in the hand itself. So let's say it's, it's like there's a balloon in here, a little balloon in here. Oh, that balloon got bigger. The balloon inflated, and the, and the whole inside of the hand, this part of the hand went up. And then you can touch, 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 touch. But the, the balloon stays inflated in the hand. Touch, keep the balloon inflated and touch, 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 touch. Try that.
that's right. That's very good. That is fantastic. You, you learn that feeling in the hand. Okay? And now, take one, three, five, and play the first three, not, don't play the whole, that, that, we don't want to stress the hand out just yet. So take one, three, five on these three notes and stand up the same way. And forget about the touch, 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 touch part. Just stand with the hand up, but don't push the keys down. Just stand up, just stand up, and the keys go down by accident, and you make this part of the hand go high. Like my hip joints, my hip joints go up when I stand up, and my hand hip joint goes up when I stand up. Please that do that, please. I have to see. That's right. Ah, you see, you want to fall down, stand up. Don't fall down, stand up. Don't fall down, stand up. Fall down, stand up. Just stand up. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> one, one time you did it, and the, this middle part of the hand went up more. And that was the one. You just One time you did it really good. Yeah, it's very good. You're very sensitive because you're figuring out, oh my goodness, sometimes I do the wrist and that's not it. Alan wants something else. It's not the wrist. It's the that hip joint part of the hand. But making that one the main thing, it's a different feeling and you, I see you trying to find it. It's very good. So you try again. This this feeling here, the, the, the middle of the hand goes up. That's it. That's it. that's it. Good. So that's already a different feeling for you, right? Yeah. So so if we could, that's like a little seed, like a new seed of a new plant. If we can grow that seed, you can play big chords, very loud, without any effort, and it'll sound better. But you have the hand has to know how to grow itself from inside. Grow itself from inside. Not the wrist. The wrist is okay. The wrist, will, the wrist will move around afterwards, but the hand has to learn this thing. Good. Now, there's a, there's a little, a quicker way to help it learn it quicker, okay? So now you take those, those same three notes and you play them like this. Like this. So can you do it like that? Just like that. And you bring, and you... You pretend that your professor is behind you and you don't like him very much and you go, baff, and you hit the professor in the face. Oh, <laughs> okay, like this. Try, uh, show me. <laughs> yeah, I know you like your professor, but we'll prevent pretend. <laughs> Good. You see, you do that very well. Now, by the way, when you come back, uh, don't curl the fingers so, so tight. Let the fingers come here. Yeah. Not here. Here. Okay. Whoop. Here. See the di you see the difference? Good. Good. And you see, it works because you did not press the keys down. You went like this. I'm not pressing the keys down. Who's pressing keys down? So now, you think you're going to do that. Oh, but just at the last second, you stay. You don't go here. You think you're going to go here, but then at the last instant, you stay there like that. Can you try that, please? Hmm? Try. That's your wrist. That's the wrist. That's why it's not working. You understand? Watch. That's better. You see, 
If the wrist doesn't look at my hand, my hand is straining tremendously. Now watch this. My hand is not straining at all. Look, here my hand doesn't strain. This is a strain for the hand, but here the, the wrists are just behind. The hand is floating. Very different. This one is very different from this one. Okay? So you try to do this one. Hand like that. Yeah? Try. You have to do this one more. That was better. Yeah, you almost got it. That's right. Okay, so the next exercise for you, Isla, is watch. One up, stay. One up, stay. One up. Stay, and when you stay, make sure that this knobby is nice and high. I'll do it here so you can see better. One, one, uh, okay, stand up, uh, pluck up, and stay with this knobby high. Pluck up, and stay with this knobby high. Pluck up, and stay with this knobby high. high. Try that, please. Not the wrist. Uh, oh, 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 ah. That was very good because now we saw where your hand wants to fall down. You, did you see it? Your hand actually wanted to do a fall down. A fall down. So if we discover, oh my goodness, I thought I, look, I can, I can run all over the place. I never fall down. And the, Oh my God, I fell down. That's a good discovery because then you can, you can improve it. You understand? So I'm asking you to do a new thing. I'm asking you, you to do a new coordination. This coordination will allow you to play loud very well. But it's new. <laughs> it's different. It's something you don't know. You have to learn it. And so... This is a great discovery. Oh my gosh, I was trying to do what Alan said, oh, but I fell down. So, let's try again. Oh, this one. Like, this, this shows me the way. You see, look, my knuckle is very good. My knuckle is very good. And now, make the knuckle good here, too. Make the knuckle good here. And now, not the wrist, not the wrist, not the falling down knuckle. A good knuckle. A good knuckle. You try again. Make the knuckle good, and now make the knuckle good. Oh, oh, do the exercise. Remember, one up, and then stay. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's so interesting to see you do it, because here obviously you're not pressing the keys down and then you go like and i see you you want to press the keys down and that's why it's not working so now close the piano close the piano that's it and do the same exercise here now watch up and now stay up and stay now let's see what happens when there's no keys to press down Ah, it's still a little stiff. That's better. That was a good one. That's better. That was a good one. Yes. You yes. felt it different. You felt it different. That's a different feeling, right? That's a different feeling, right? Do it two more times here. Ba. Boop. Ba. And then quickly. Ba. And the same feeling. Yeah. Better. 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 Did that feel different for you? 
Yeah. Now, eventually, you'll do the same thing with the thumb out here. But with the thumb stretched out, it's more difficult. So I wanted you to learn it. Because the more the thumb stretches out, here my hand doesn't want to fall down. But here the hand wants to fall down more. <laughs> you see? When you stretch the thumb out, the hand is already falling down. But you need to stand up, not fall down. Stand up. So we learned it with the thumb close, so it's easy to stand up. When you really understand the stand up, then even when you're here, you'll stand up. Even with the thumb stretched way out to an octave, you'll stand up still. Um, so I, I'm, I, I'm not sure how far to go. Like I would love in, in one 40-minute lesson to teach you to play forte really, really well and integrate it into this piece. But I'm not sure that we can really do it because these are new feelings for you, this new feeling for your hand. So uh, what, uh, what I'd like you to do is practice all the exercises I gave you. I gave you several different exercises. And, uh, and the hand, the feeling in the hand changes, the feeling in the hand changes. And at a certain point, you'll, you'll, you'll notice, oh my gosh, goodness, I'm playing loud in the Chopin, and it sounds good, and I'm no, I don't have a problem anymore, because the hand learned how. But you, you, you have to understand, don't press the key down. Don't press the key down. Stand up and watch the key go down by accident. Yeah? One more exercise to, to, to help you experience like as a fact that the key doesn't go down. So would you please grab a key edge, grab a key edge like this. So you grab the, edge, the key by the edge, the actual edge that's sticking out, and you grab it with a finger and thumb like that, and you wiggle it, okay? Could you do that for me? I know it's stupid. I know it's stupid. But just try it. Yeah. So, look, this is a lever, right? Is it going up and down? No. No. Is it going up and down? No. Now, this one is going up and down, but that's just by accident. It's the same as this. It's the same as this. It's the same as this. So, I saw you going like this, and you're pressing it down. Don't press it down. Just wiggle it. Wiggle it. Wiggle it. The same as like this. W just wiggle it, okay? Try. I want to see it. There. Now. And you see, it feels different when you wiggle it. And when you don't press it down. And that different feeling is more free. When you press it down, you clamp it for just an instant in time, and that creates a, a micro problem. So everything we did today was to, to get out of too much down. When you're, when you're playing the, the, the first part of this, there's, there's no problem. You're not doing too much down. When you go to play forte, then you try to do too much down because you think that's what's needed for the forte. No, you need to stand up quicker. Stand up! Stand up! Like that. So to stand up quicker, you have to stop going down. Stand up! Whoa! <laughs> you stand up really quick, you jump right up. <laughs> yeah, but that's what lends an energy to the forte and a wonderful, it's rich and it's clear and it's, it's, yeah, you see, it's, there, the reason it sounds so good, uh, well, actually, let's, let's actually figure out what the notes are there, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sounds so good not because I'm much bigger than you are but because I'm doing this thing in my hand all the time I'm not 
going down. I actually... So now, would you try playing like this? Both hands and go like this and just play those two and then bring your hands up here. Try. Play all the notes that are written. You see, you're trying, trying to do it with your wrists, but the wrists are out of it. The wrists are like the, the hand comes here and the wrists are just in the middle. They're not doing all this stuff. They just go like this. That's better. That's better. And the hands come back here. Again. And Isla, it's very, very good. Just to make sure that your, your nerves really figure it out. Go all the way back next to your ears. Hello, these are my ears. Put your hands beside your, beside your ears. Beside your ears. Better? Again, five times. Yeah. Oh. No accent on the second one. It's not, it's not like that. They're actually even. They're actually the same. They're the same volume. I know there's an accent on the second one, but the ac you're making that accent too heavy, and that's why I'm telling you not to do it. There, there'll be a different way. You see, I got my accent, but I didn't make it heavy. So you try this and come back again. Very good. But that's already Chopin sound. And now finish it with a nice phrase. So your wrists are trying to do too much, and that's what stops you from playing forte. When the wrists, when the wrists stay in the middle, not this with the wrist, the, the, you lose too much energy. For forte, the energy comes from the whole arm. If you break the wrist, the energy from the whole arm can't get through. That's my whole arm. That's why I said go back here. Because look, it's from the elbow. From the elbow. When you break at the wrist, the energy of the elbow is not available. Okay? Look, we have to stop here because we have to listen to Eric. But uh, you're going to have a recording of this. I think it's important that you work with the recording and remember the... Because we did several different exercises and I, I made a bunch of explanations. Because your technique is fantastic. Like you, you play wonderfully. But I see this question about forte playing. Many great pianists have this problem. I have heard concert pianists, world-class concert pianists, who play wonderfully, and then they go to very loud chords and they start going down too much. So this is a common problem. This is why I took so much care to try and explain, look, and to try and put it in this weird idea. The biggest illusion is that the key goes down. The key does not go down. Yeah, so I'm crazy. But if you think that way, you play better. Don't put the key down. Wiggle it. Stand up on it. Run on it. Run on the keys. Don't push them down. Just run. So many of these things you already do very well. But I see in a certain situations, ah, you push it down, you push it down. And if you could change your experience, change the way of thinking, change the way you see it. So really tell yourself, it's not down. It's not down. Even, even that, it's not down. It's like a leaf coming down on the air and the leaf just lands on the ground like that. It didn't go down like that, right? But up, uh, it's all dancing, and most dancing is some form of up. 
Mot you see, gravity pulls us down. Watch. <laughs> Bam! It just goes down. We don't have to help gravity. Gravity's already doing a lot of down. But the dent and the life of humanity is I'm up, I'm up. I'm with gravity. Gravity's down and I'm up and together we dance. So you're a little bit too much on the down when you do your fortes. Is that clear? Yeah, so we didn't really look at, at the, the musical part of this, this Chopin waltz. You're doing it very, very well. Just at the very, very beginning. That, remember that exercise I showed you at the beginning? A yang leg and a yin leg. Remember that? We did it right at the beginning, right? So if you practice the, the very opening of the piece with that idea in mind... So, uh, hold on, just I don't, don't have the music. Uh, uh, so, stand, touch. So, if you stand up in each of those and just touch the underneath ones in the same way, you will get an even better sound. You, it will sound more leggero and it will sound more bubbling. But we don't really have time to practice that now. I'll just tell you that and trust that you can, you can figure that out on your own, okay? So that's one way of applying that very first exercise I gave you. Stand and touch. Stand, yang finger, yin finger. That's the technique for the whole opening theme. Yang finger, yin, yin. Yang, yang, yin. You understand? Great, so you have a lot of stuff to think about, but I think you're, you're going to do very well with this. Thank you, Isla, for playing so beautifully and for, for listening so carefully and, and uh, doing so well. Okay? Great. Any questions about what we've heard so far from, from Isla? This, this, this concern about playing loud, it's uh, very important. It's interesting that each of us we had in with Ami, we had a, th a thing about the thumb and a thing about the lateral arm. And with Isla, we had a thing about forte and standing up. So we're going through all the, the different, uh, different parts of understanding a, a, a well-formed piano technique. Very interesting. Any questions? Okay, we're ready for Eric. Eric, do you have questions before we start? Uh, sure, I have one minor question. Uh, that question would be like, um, how would you make uh, Debussy's, like, the, it, the sound of impressionism happen in this piece? Because, you know, I'm playing it fairly well, but like some of the uh, minor details or like the major details that I haven't acquired yet is more on the feeling on the entire surrounding of the piece and how he projects the sound on this piece. And I really want to know how to, how to uh, develop that into a more complex, into a more rich uh, impression set. Yeah, this is, this is an excellent question. And uh, I, I watched your recording. I was very, very impressed. And I saw certain things. And it's literally like you say, to make it more impressionist, it's like taking a brush and making your brush strokes a little bit more like that or make, but in piano, it'll be making the thumb a little bit more like that or making the fingers a little bit more like that or making the arm a little bit more like that. Little tiny adjustments here and there to get that, that magic impressionist kind of sound. Right. Yeah. But so very good question. So let's hear you play it and then we'll, we'll see uh, how to apply these ideas to this very wonderful piece of music.
Bravo, bravo. Everybody's clapping. Bravo. Very, very good. Okay, listen, Eric, this is wonderful. I'm glad you played it again because I already watched the, the recording, but this, this time you played differently. I saw many, many different things, many improvements actually from the recording, although the recording was excellent. And it gives us, and also so the others could hear, uh, and it gives us a very, very good basis for work. So, um, very, very impressive playing. Like, and how, how can we make it more impressionist? So, there, I have to speak physically. I'm sorry, we should be speaking musically in terms of sound and everything, but if I'm, I like to, sometimes speaking physically, we, we can actually uh, have an effect on the musical sound. So, like a, you know, when the painter does a brush stroke, you know, Van Gogh had one kind of brush stroke and Monet had another kind and Seurat had another kind. Each one, we should be able to do each one of them. So, to me, your wrist movements, your wrist movements are sometimes of a more romantic nature and a, a, rather than an impressionist nature. So sometimes the we're we're going to look actually we're going to look at this and uh, we're going to look at that uh, 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 first of all as the first instance and then the second theme. So you basically. Moved your wrist on every one, which sort of makes it expressivo, but on every single thing, rather than a, a more evolved combination of finger, hand, wrist, and arm moving through the phrase might give us a, something more in, a lyrical in an impressionist way, rather than an expressivo romantic way. Okay? And and this especially applies when the culmination comes, when we have uh, when we have all this fantastic stuff, which for me is one of the greatest expressions of pure joy and ecstasy that exists in all the, the, the literature. It's like fantastic. Yeah. And we can again, it's a very minor adjustment of what the wrist is doing. Because sometimes I see your wrist going like this. And I feel like it's an artifact. It's a leftover, a leftover reflex from when your fingers were not so strong. So like if the fingers are a little bit over relaxed, then the wrist will move too much. And as soon as the finger stands up well, like you saw how I made, uh, how I, I had a, a, a Isla like stand up more, stand up more. Actually bring this, your knuckles are fantastic. You know about standing. But I feel as in certain situations you revert to something where the finger is a little over relaxed and then the wrist does a little too much. And it's a micro adjustment to bring it back into this impressionistic aesthetic. Uh, so mostly we're, we're going to work on the, the, the left hand first theme and the right hand second theme. But, and then we'll, we'll just cover a, another couple of spots. Another thing, for instance, when you started second theme, you actually kind of stopped the music and then started second theme. Many, many of the, the section changes are not so clear cut. Like there's something pastel and soft about impressionism. And so some, many times you would need to bleed in, bleed into one section from the previous section rather than show us so clearly. Ah, now it's new section. But that's a, a minor point. So if you would be so kind as to... Uh, and then, uh, and you will look very, very interestingly up. There's a slur, staccato, staccato, and then uh, nothing, and then a tenuto. So I feel the way that you're using your your wrist uh, interferes with my ability to per, my ear to perceive the two staccatos and the tenuto and the slurs. So if you just left your wrist more neutral, how would that, how would that look and sound? Just the left hand of that, that opening, you know. Okay, would you put your left hand, right hand on your left forearm and do that again? So play with the, with a, a it's like professor is here. Yeah, 
Right hand is your professor, and he's going to feel what's going on. Do it again. Okay, so did you feel that there were several up movements? Like you, so uh, uh, this one here, there was a big, and so it's like the stand-up movement. I love the, the idea of you standing up. I just spent the whole lesson with Isla almost talking about, come on, stand up more, stand up more. But the stand-up in the arm here means that... It, my stand-up mostly is in the, in the finger. You see, if I slowed it down, ah, look, there's a stand-up in the finger. Ah, there's a stand-up in the finger, and look. Tenuto, 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 staccato, 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 staccato. But my arm, my arm basically stays in the middle. I think you're trying to do too much with the arm. The arm is very big, but look, the, the finger, the finger. You see, my fingers are very small, but so are the keys. And now the, 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 the melody is going this way, but these up and down movements to make the difference between a tenuto and a staccato, you're doing way too much. So, so that's why it's not pastel. That's why it's not impressionist. So stay in neutral. Stay in neutral. Stand up, stay in, keep the arm in neutral, not up here. Keep the arm in neutral. Do a tenuto. Keep the arm in neutral. So, sorry. Uh, I'll do it up here so you can see closer to the keys. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm slowing it down a little so you can see. Maybe. I should take my jacket off so you can see my arms better. I'm not sure. Uh, can you see better? Uh, see, the arm is basically like a typewriter carriage. It's not doing that so much. Try. Again, very good. Clear. Uh, very difficult get these four notes clear. Excellent. Do that again. Again. What's with the second finger? What's, why is this note not sounding? One of these two notes is not sounding. Either the second finger or the thumb. Yeah? Okay. Very, very good, but don't go for speed. I'm missing the, the middle oh. two notes. Okay, now make a special effort to stay neutral in the forearm. Put the hand back here and again, and play at speed. Faster, faster, and you feel when you go to speed, it's difficult to take out your old jumps, right? Yeah. But you feel those jumps were actually interfering. There, without those jumps, you can control your touch much more precisely. You can begin to paint impressionistic sound colors. But these big arm jumps, they were getting in the way. You couldn't really, each, each note, each note has its color. Yeah. But with these big jumps, it's all painted with romantic oil paintings, like a Delacroix painting or something, right? No, so your question is, you see, the, there's a way of changing very slightly your physical strategy in order to get more pastel colors available to you. I can't tell you, do this color, do that color. It, you're, you're, you're the artist, but we need you to be able to feel, oh, I can, 
I can do this one. I can do this one. I can do this. I can do any color I want. I'm not doing something which gets in the way of my own control of my colors. So that's why I said, I think this movement, it, it was an artifact. It was from very early in your training when you needed that big movement. But now, now I think it, it's time to refine it to something which suits more your, your artistic, what you're listening for, okay? So that's going to that's going to alter the whole first theme, yeah? All, all the time when you've got that. Okay? Then the yeah. next couple of sections were fine in my opinion, very very good. Maybe if I was there I could see something, but let's go to second theme. Let's go to uh, the un peu cede molto rubato. And then and again, this time I actually have a nerve injury in my right hand, so I can't play uh, fully with my right hand. I have to. Oh, okay. So I'm going to reverse it, but I'm going to demonstrate. So you're going to put your left hand on your right forearm, and we're going to again. So did you see? My up and down was not like yours. I go sideways. Now look, there's a little bit of an undulation. Sorry. Uh, uh, uh. But you see, I'm kind of crawling in and out of the keys, going sideways on the keys, and I'm, I'm trying to avoid this thing. Be you see, my fingers, my fingers have to be more. They feel. They have to feel the keys more. They have to be more intelligent. And did you feel, even, I'm just demonstrating to you, and the phrase is going like this. You know why the phrase is going like that? Because my name is Alan Fraser. No, no, that's a joke. <laughs> so try it. So again, stop with it. Refine your wrist. Make the wrist. And... There's something in my wrist. Sorry. Uh, but there's, it's a little more... Again, you're quietening the wrist down so that the fingers can color in a more impressionistic way. Could you try that, please? And for the, for the moment, give yourself some help from your... This sensing hand is a great help. It's, it, you feel more what you're doing. It's really weird, but it, yeah. it works, so let's use it as a, as a tool, a practice tool. What do you think? It's pretty. You good. like? Yeah. You like? Do you feel the difference? There's there's a real yes. difference. Again, for me, this is a natural impressionistic kind of espressivo. It's just flowing. It's, and the other one was kind of a manufactured. Oh, I'm so expressive. Yeah, yeah I can play expressively <laughs> and everything. You know. But somehow this there's something more uh, sincere, honest. You're feeling your way. And the first time this, this second theme comes, it, it kind of, it grows out of, we don't expect it, unless we know the music, but it kind of, oh, oh, it's like a revelation, and we're feeling our way through this lovely theme. So now your technique more matches the aesthetic. Try again, I, like, I, I would like you to feel this a little bit more. Bravo. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'll go again. I love it. I love it. Keep going. Yeah. 
ba 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 da 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 da. Yeah. Okay, Eric. This was wonderful. So look, why did I have you do this? You can't do this when you're playing the piece. But the way your left hand, the way your left hand plays its part, your left hand can pretend it's still doing this. When your left hand does this, that's the, that's the same as the left hand doing this. Your left hand can help the right hand. If your right hand listens to your left, the left hand is not playing. The left hand is not doing that. So why would the right hand do that? Just let the right hand just listen to the left hand. And you're going to get the same result. Try it. Try it. Uh, hands together or is it just left hand? Yeah, no, no. You do the, You put the hands together and immediately, as if your hand was still on the forearm. But now it's only metaphysically on the forearm. You understand? Okay. Yeah. But the gestures are together. Oh, okay. a little detail it's not da 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 it's no, one two three it's one two three one two three so that that's uh, you need to fix that but this was wonderful see the two hands are dancing together and they're both dancing horizontally they're they've stopped with this and now the the the, the phrase is much more lyrical it's much more in the spirit of Debussy yeah you like Yes, very and, and 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 it, it it flows more naturally. You don't have so many of these artificial cuts like stop start. It's not necessary here. It's this is more unfolding, 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 unfolding. So okay, so that this next part you play great. I mean, certain things you do in here you do better than I've heard from anybody. Like certain of the the little uh, the the sudden fortes that are going on, and many of these things you do really really wonderfully. So I'm very, very happy with this, this interpretation of yours. So, but it's, seeing as, as time is short, can we cut to here? And now, so here we're at measure 41. And here, could you, again, uh, it's another place where the wrist needs to not, the wrist is one part of a chain. It's finger, hand, wrist, arm, upper arm, body, yeah? And when the wrist does too much, in a, in a place like forte, you notice I, 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 stood, I sat forward a little. So just rocking on my pelvis a little bit, it's not muscular force down, it's the skeleton going... I'm not even thinking of playing loud, I'm just using my structure. But I have my whole structure from here to here to here to here. Now, when I do this with my wrist, I cut all that. So why would I do my wrist? This movement of the wrist is from fingers that perceive themselves as being too weak. But if but your fingers aren't too weak. That's just a per misperception. <laughs> your fingers are fine. So look, just stand up. And, and, and neutralize the wrist. Don't stiffen the wrist, but leave it in the middle, not up here, because now my hand is out of place. See, my hand can grow this lovely arc structure. Yeah? Now look what my wrist did. My, does my hand have a good arc structure? No. Ah, now it has a good arc structure. We 
you both have Steinways. Yes. So you should be able to do this now. Ah, you did this, but you did a, you sort of melted into the keys. That's a wonderful technique, but perhaps not for forte. For, so, so could you make a, make more of an arch now? So the hand literally gets into this kind of a shape. It's like a three, three point shape. Uh, you see your wrist wants to take over. Yeah, now watch. This knuckle right here. This, ah, you see a little knob, a little a bump on top here? Right here. You see the bump? Yeah. Now, now I'm sure you've noticed that bump many, many times, because many times I see it when you're playing. But I didn't see it on this chord, and this is where I would need to see it. Yeah, with that bump there, that's your healthy forte. This bump here, this is the keystone of an arch. So look, see, you see my hand is like a triangle? And, and this is the keystone, this is the top. If, if this structure is good, fortes are effortless. If this structure is dropped, fortes become difficult. And you have to work at it. You can do it, but it, it's work. When my hand is here, I don't even work. I just... <laughs> Why would anybody work? When the bones... Work is like muscular work. If you can make your bones do the work... <laughs> it's just bones. Bam. It's really easy. Try. But, but you see, your wrist wants to do too much. And the wrist... <laughs> pulls the bones out of alignment. They're not lined up. Now look, this is not a straight line. There's this arch here. But uh, strangely enough, if the arch is flat, then that, that it doesn't work because now the wrist is too high. Yeah? Right. So try, go slowly and grow this arch. Grow this arch. Very, oh, way better. Did you feel the change? Yes. Something changes. Yeah. There's a sense of power in the hand and in the arm. I would invite you to familiarize yourself with that, that sense of power, which is structurally derived. Because you, you won't work so hard and you'll have better sound. But it's tricky because you have to reprogram, like you have to get the wrist into a different place, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you have to give the wrist a, another job, which is a, it's less of a job. Like the wrist is trying to do too much. The wrist is trying to do it all. You let the wrist, give the wrist the rest and let everybody else do their part. Ah, oh my goodness. All of a sudden everything, so do that again. Try, so you do this and you grow, grow that structure. Great, great. <laughs> and you do it in slow motion a few times just to get the feel of it and then you spe speed it up, but you you it's a sense of power which is it's not aggressive power. It's just, it's good power. So, you know, I feel good, yeah. And then you keep it for all this. <laughs> you keep it for all that. All those are played with arches. Yeah? Yeah. Again? And then, oh. ah, ah, ah. why, <laughs> why, 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 why? <laughs> you, you see, look, that's actually a musical phrase, and he writes all those under one phrase. So watch. Remember, I spoke with the, uh, with the Ami about. Uh, the, the arm phrasing rather than button. Yeah? So this, my two arms are going to make one musical phrase. Okay? Now, do you see? <laughs> what does this have to do with the musical phrase? So you did this to get, to get quickly make the hand shift. 
but you broke the musical phrase. So the, there's a way of getting that with with a musical phrase going, which would not include this big movement here. So could you retrain your movements in the light of this phrase shape, which Debussy marks? Bravo. You see, it's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's more impressionist. You have more exact control over every single note in that line. Every one of them. Because you weren't throwing your, you, that's, you were throwing yourself off, actually. But if you think, oh, my arms make the phrase, oh, there's a phrase mark, my arms have to make that phrase, then you will find a natural flowing movement, which is actually what Debussy wanted. That's why he wrote it that way. Yeah? Yeah. Good. So then we get through. Do you have measure numbers? Uh, yes, I have measure numbers. Yeah, so measure 166. Now we're back. Uh, uh, I can't do that with my... Here, would you bong this one more? Yeah? Would you bong this one a little more? Uh, yeah, that, that stuff there... Can you make the bass note a little louder? Because it's got the last, like, four measures. Yeah, and now, uh, can you show me the right hand? Can you show me that, please? Yeah. So... You, I, I love your thumb because it's so different from the, from the hand. Like your thumb is... Uh, I'm showing it backwards so you can see, but your thumb, is, your thumb is standing up. So this is very much a, a yang thumb and yin fingers. So can you increase the standing, the, the degree to which your, your thumb says go away hand? So... Did you practice it all like this, standing up and making each finger just yin, just touch, 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 touch? Yeah. That's it. So you, un you understand, Eric, just poking the thumb and then moving the fingers, that's excellent. But if the thumb actually stands, not just poke, but actually stands, the fingers are even more differentiated and you will get a more pastel impressionist color in there okay so if you actually stand the thumb then you get more differentiation of the two voices you did excellent you're using your structure fantastically but it's a little bit of a poke and if you actually stand then you get a little bit more color okay you see the difference yeah that clear to you yes okay Great, and, and now these ones I wasn't, these are actually veloce. These should be played almost out of time. So I wasn't happy about those. I, somehow they weren't, they weren't uh, clear enough and they weren't, they weren't uh, crisp enough. You hear the sound? Ah, hear the sound? No matter how fast I go, there's still, there's still, there's a sound of, oh, I missed. Sorry, I'm not demonstrating very well, but uh, let's see what you're doing. Somehow, I, I wasn't sure. What ah, oh, now you did it better. Now you did it better. Because now your wrists didn't do too much. Before, I mean, I love these flexible wrists. It's, it's great to have them, but you can overuse them in certain situations. So most of this piece to transfer from an oil painting, romantic kind of color aesthetic to an impressionist aesthetic, we'll have to reduce the wrist action so that the fingers have more individuality. The wrist is there. Uh... Oh, look, we're almost out of time, but I would, just a couple more things. I think that when you get to here, uh, 
So I think this is, it's a, it's a point of mounting excitement and you're sort of building and building and building and building. And at this point, you've been building for a long time and you're pretty close to the explosion, like the culmination, right? So I think to play it with a half pedal or no pedal, it kind of pulls things back. Like I would tend to, I would tend to play it with full pedal because we're now we're going for it. Now we're going for it. Yeah. Have you ever try that? Uh, I've never tried with full pedal. I tried with almost half. full pedal, but something so that the, the 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 whole sense of excitement doesn't drop and then come back, but just it keeps going. It keeps going. Yeah. Can you show show me that a little bit, please? Okay. Great. And again, you started controlling your wrists. Because the first time you went like this, but now you went like this. Yeah. And it's dancing more and it's more rhythmically alive. Bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, ba, bum. Boom. This, this, this is almost lyrical. These wrist movements are lyrical. But we're we're not lyrical here. We're heading towards ecstasy, right? So yeah. now, uh, yeah, when we discipline the wrist and make it a part of the whole, not I'm the most important. No, you're one of the. Yeah. Then it starts to really cook. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, uh, can you show me the left hand? Okay, now, now watch, watch, I'm going to play it your way, and now I'm going to play it my way. Did you see what I did? Yeah. I stood up more, stand, 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 and now watch this, stand, stand. And when I did stand, stand, did you see where my wrist is? It's in the middle. Yeah? Not. I swear, that wrist is a wrist that believes that the fingers can't do it, and I've got to help them. But of course the fingers can do it. The fingers can do it. And your fingers are great. So, again, this is le this is... This is more pastel. That would be more romantic and lyrical. But I think... Yeah, I think what, what we want is something more dancing and impressionist, yeah? Right. So try slowly to get this idea of the thumb stand. Stand. Yeah? You like... There's a, there's a different feeling, right? It actually feels more alive. It feels more joyous. Ha, ah, ah. ha. This is a little forced, but this is... Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's that, that standing feeling... I need that here. Uh, uh, Because all this there, if the wrist takes over, then the, ha the fingers will stand less and it will be more lyrical and less ecstatic. Right. But, but when that, that thumb stand is in there, and then... So all the time I'm making sure the thumb is doing this, the fingers are doing that, the thumb is doing... That. Then, again, my wrist finds its place, which is the neutral, the neutral zone. Can you try it there? Uh, let's take it from here. From there, 212. And now continue with this standing idea. Wow, did that feel different? Yeah, I th you're 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 in the driver's seat. You're really on top of things. So those wrist movements, which were kind of expressive, 
And they were actually lyrical, which we don't want. And they actually undermined you. They actually made you feel less confident because they, they threw you a little off balance. But you're playing so well. I mean, you're playing great. So even a little tiny misjudgment can throw you off, yeah? And okay. now, oh, look, oh my, I'm standing. I'm, I'm in the driver's seat. Oh, that, that good feeling, you can cultivate that through the entire piece just by sort of refining the wrist and making the wrist be more of an impressionist wrist and less of a lyrical romantic wrist, yeah? Yes. Now, please play here, here, here we don't have time to stand, 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 stand. Here is a yeah. straight poke, but it's a complete structural poke. So do not allow your wrist to reduce the structurality of your hand. So you see, it's it, the hand structure, the arch here. The structure makes those bells ring out. He writes tre en or very much out. They're like bells. And he's yeah. got accents, accents and staccato. And a tenuto. Yeah? So yeah. The, the hand structure is very important. And you see, if my wrist goes up, then I'm, I'm lost. Right. Show me the left hand. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, my God. Up, up. Okay, this one, this wrist, dispense with it. Do not use your wrist to carry your hand here. Just move your arm here. And then, and then this one. Dispense with those wrist movements because when you do this, there's no phrase. I'm not, it's not really no wrist, but for you, it's much less wrist. I'm just going to say no wrist, okay? So no wrist, no wrist, no wrist. So no wrist, no wrist, no wrist. Do you see what I did? I replaced the wrist movement with a, a stand-up movement in the hand itself. St stand within the hand itself. Stand within the hand itself. Stand within the hand itself. When I do that, my arm can take me here and there with no need for these movements, which are destabilizing you and forcing you to play with less power. You're doing this to try to get more power. It's making you have less power. Sir, so, sir. So, that's way more power than this. You see, I lost my power. <sighs> done with structure not with the wrist which breaks structure the wrist is flexible but it's disciplined it knows its place here the tolerances are very fine if the alignment is just a little off you lose power because the power comes from the bones being well aligned <sighs> that's great sound and that's mostly the bones doing it the bones have to be in just the right alignment so this thing this, this takes my bones completely out of alignment. I got them in alignment. In alignment. In alignment. In alignment. Not out of alignment. Try very slowly so you can feel it. Maybe go. Yeah. The difference yeah you hear the difference yes yeah i'm i'm hoping this is a good experience for you and that you can 
you, I mean, this is the first time, you know, the old habits will come back, but you work on this, this new, it's a new way of thinking about the peace, actually, yeah? Sure. That which physically we're closer to the aesthetic of the peace. But this is, is, is fortissimo. It has to be so loud without any impression of struggling or oh, I'm trying hard to play loud. It has to be an ecstatic dance. It has to be free. And the structure, the well-aligned structure, that's what will free you. The minute you're out of alignment anywhere, you have less freedom. Yeah? Yeah. So I think once you get that left hand going, then this is going to be... Again, again, all these tenuto ones. It's a tenuto under the phrase, but do not do those with the wrist. It's done with a... The tenuto bar means discipline your wrist. It means do the opposite of your, you, you, what you're used to. Now, I'm going to hold. I'm going to... Tenuto means hold. Tenuto means hold. Tenuto means hold. Tenuto means hold. So he's telling you with his notation, do not wave your wrist around as, as is your won't, yeah? Mm -hmm. so, and again, you see the sound changes and it becomes a specific kind of phrase. Pa, 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 pa. It's a phrase and it's ta, 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 ta. It's both. But neither of those is this. Can you try? Right hand only. Uh, actually, yeah, right hand only. With the... <laughs> Great. Does that feel different? Yeah. Sounds very, very good. Just one more thing. Don't think that you're pressing the keys down. Remember I told Isla, the biggest illusion in piano playing is that the keys go down. Yeah? Just look. When I stand up, nothing went down. The floor doesn't go down. So if you just do this, stand, stand. If you just stood, 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 it would sound even better. Try yeah <laughs> where are you what what on what continent are you uh british columbia Canada. you're in british columbia you're a canadian just like me how about that yeah, yeah i'm from montreal so we're five thousand miles away on zoom and i can hear the difference when you play like that what the last time it, the sound was more singing more free more color yeah. Very good. So if, you know, I'm sure you heard the sound change where you are too. Well, like, yeah. yeah. So you see, it's the use of self, the use of the structure to make the, the piano sounds yeah. that we want to make. Yeah. So, yeah. so this was, uh, Eric, thank you so much for playing today and for, for listening and understanding so well. Because for me, it, it was a wonderful uh, example of, what piano somatics is all about this, like the art the art of sensing how you're doing what you're doing to refine it so that the musical structures are more in my ear and that i have a like in this case an impressionist aesthetic because you're playing it extremely well but you have this question i'm playing it pretty good but i i i know there's more that i could i could get out of this and i feel that we've touched on how you could how you could refine even further. Yes. The, the, so it was, it was interesting. Each, each of you had a very different, you know, with, with Ami, we had the thumb and we had the arm. With Ayla, we had stand up more for Forte. With you, we had mm, not so much a romantic lyrical wrist, but a more impressionistic wrist so that I have more leeway in my brush strokes, more compact actually in the wrist movement to open up what all the different ways the fingers and the hand have of joining themselves to the key to make these musical structures come to life. Bravo, Eric. Thank you very much. I, I thank you. And thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you for your time. It's, it's been wonderful. And it's, and you'll have the, uh, you will have the, uh, oh, what am I doing here? 
uh, I'm just trying to change it to a gallery view here so we can just, uh, you know, come together to, to wrap up. And well, it's, it's been great to have the time to do this, and it's been great to uh, introduce you all to the ideas of piano somatics. And, but I, I'm very, very touched at how each one of you sort of, you know, cottoned on to the idea and really made significant changes in your playing so quickly. So it's uh, very exciting to have the chance to work together. Are there any more questions before we close? Any comments or? Hmm? Yeah? I Everybody like happy? Comment, actually. Angela? I think uh, it is really wonderful to see all the young pianists improve so much within such a short time span. Mm -hmm. And that even though we are so far separated, but music connects us all. And also we have one major commonality is we're human and we have the same body structure, even though one may be taller, one is maybe wider, but the, the bone, the system is very much similar. But how we can connect through the music by using our musculoskeletal structure to offer the maximum benefits, how it connects from just how we think and how we use the body and instantly things change, come alive. And I think it is, I would really like to know more. And um, I, I wonder what our young musicians here think, but it's really very um, widening as an experience to see how we can just quickly change our perspective and improve the, the so-called technique, but actually is our expression and how we gear our body to make music much more, not only musically, but much more easily to facilitate mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I really would like to thank Professor Alan Fraser for introducing us to piano somatics, because I find it a very fresh and new experience because as musicians, myself being a pianist, sometimes we just get so involved, a lot of notes we memorize, we practice, and we feel that the harder it works, we work. It seems like we've given ourselves all, but sometimes we don't need to work so hard. You know, we have to think of how we use our body to maximize ourselves. And sometimes it seems like, well, it's, it's just within reach, just that we're not aware of it. Mm. And I would really love to know more about uh, Professor Fraser's piano somatics. And um, I, if you would like to know more, uh, we would love to continue this kind of masterclass. And today the video, uh, Professor uh, Alan Fraser will send to me as the organizer and we will forward it to you. And if you have any other questions, we would really love to follow up with you. Like uh, we'll also send you a little questionnaire to see if you have other questions to ask because it's not just this lesson. I mean, I hope that Professor Fraser will be available to us to help us more. I would really look forward to it. And um, if you have other questions, you can uh, put in the question there and we will also be forwarding you this video so you can revisit it and continue to improve along that direction. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in our masterclass series. Great. Thank you so much, Angela, for organizing it. And yes, I, these lessons are not the end. It's a starting point. It's a starting off point. So if new new questions will probably arise out of the lessons, so please feel free to send an email with a question. And uh, hopefully we'll organize another one of these. So we'll make it a, a regular thing and we can uh, we can continue to work together. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Professor Fraser. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Everybody, bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. You too. Yeah, have a good day. Bye.